Hey guys, I've got three DIYs for you today. Let's jump into them. So I came up with a solution to cover my ugly breaker box in my laundry room. You're going to need at least two painter sticks. I use the five gallon, some fabric, and some paint. I'm using Burnt Umber by Apple Barrel. The reason I said at least two painter sticks is that you could double them up and sandwich the fabric, but I'm just going to have the front on mine. I'm not going to have a back, but you could do it either way. So if you don't have a, some sort of a saw um, or some other something to cut um, painter sticks with, what I do is I just, um, I'm going to use this utility knife here and score down as deep as I can to cut the handles off so I just have um, one straight uniform piece of wood. I'm just drawing a line as a guide and then I'm scoring down over and over and over and then what I'm going to do is um, take this to the edge of the table and that's off camera I'm sorry about that but and then I'm just going to get the edge of the table as close to that line to that score mark um, on the painter stick and that will um, that will work out the best if you get the line as close to the edge as you can um, just barely hanging over the edge of the table and that way it's going to put the pressure where it needs to 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 break where it needs to break but it's very important that you score down as deep as you can um, and all the way around it too if you can um, in order to have a clean break. I do have a um, miter saw out in my husband's shop, but it was raining on this day that I was crafting, and so I just thought that this would work out okay. My husband's shop is on the other end of the yard, and so it was raining pretty good that day. Now where you cut your, your painter stick, you're going to want to sand it smooth so you don't have any sharp places or splinters. And then you're going to finish it however you want. This is basically going to be the frame, and, but it's just going to go on the top and the bottom of what we're making. And so you're going to want to paint or stain or leave it natural, whatever matches your decor the best. There's a few ways that you can go about this. You could certainly use painter's tape. I just took this yardstick and I'm making a line down the center. I found the center of my piece of cloth and I made a line down the center and then I decided that it wasn't wide enough. And so that's what these two outer lines here are. I just made the center line, um, you know, a little bit thicker. So I have two lines drawn on here more than what I need. So it's just one wider line in the middle and then two skinnier lines on the outside of the wider line. And it's just going to create a um, ticking stripe sort of um, look. Thank you. 
Using painter's tape and sponging on the paint might would be a quicker option, but I was just worried about it bleeding underneath the painter's tape, this being fabric. And so I chose this slower option that was just a little more safe to, to hand draw out the lines and then to hand paint filling these lines in. Once I got going, it actually went by pretty quick. Now I just took the um, painter's stick and applied it to the top with hot glue and then one at the bottom, centering it as best as I could. And for a hanger, I'm just going to hot glue some twine onto the back. You could certainly hang this up as is, or you can do like I did here, and I'm just going to attach some old postcards, or you could do photographs um, using a magnet. I had some artwork planned to hang over this breaker box, but I just wanted to um, come up with something fast and free to sort of fix my problem at hand and I think this worked out great. I really like how it looks and it certainly looks better than what it did. This next one is so easy, but it makes such a cute decor piece for a laundry room. You're just going to need some of these old timey looking um, clothes pins on this packaging and they call them doll pins. And you also need either some jute twine or I'm using this cotton twine that I got from Walmart. It was like $3 for this amount of twine and I really like the look of it. You could leave these natural if that matches your decor, or you could paint them white. That would be very cute. I'm going to be um, using the antique wax just to make them look older. Now, whether you paint or stain the inside of these clothespins is completely up to you. I found that it does look better if you finish the inside as well, um, but it did take, it did make it take about double the time to um, paint the, to finish the inside as well. So um, you just want to have like a brush that has a very uh, thin bristles, very flat bristles, I mean, to fit in between there to, um, to paint inside the clothespin. I used the head of the clothespin to hang on to while I painted the rest of it, and then I let all of them dry for a minute and then I could hold the other end to paint the head of the clothespin.
I love how this turned out and how it looks. And I'm really loving how cheap these DIYs are today because these were all nearly free. This next DIY is my favorite of today. If you have a favorite, please let me know down in the comments. I'm going to be using two of these rolled chocolate wafers. They're like hazelnut from the Dollar Tree. So a dollar each on these. And you're going to need um, some paint. And on one of these, I'm going to put one of these wooden beads on the top just for extra decoration. You can totally customize these however you want. My wooden beads, they have a hole that goes all the way through. And so just to fill this up as best as I can, I'm using this um, paintable sandable, stainable um, wood filler. Once that has hardened, I'm just going to give it a light sanding and then glue it onto the top of the lid and the centers as well as I can with this E6000. Now I would not trust this knob um, good enough to remove the lid using the knob by pulling on the knob to remove the lid. I'll be just, you know, grasping the lid itself to take the lid on and off. I would not trust the hold of this, I don't think, well enough to use it to put the lid on and off. One of the tins, the one with the knob on the top, I'm going to paint with this Heirloom White by Rust-Oleum. And the other one, I'm going to paint a matte black. I really love this high heat paint by Rust-Oleum. It's just about $4 for a can, and so very affordable, and it has a great look. I have this principle here for the black can. And I just got this off of thegraphicsfairy.com, and I will leave that link in the bottom if I remember um, for you to get this same printable. You can see here this great finish um, on this black can. I just love that paint. But I thought about doing a circle on the top, but I decided that I liked the look of the P on the top of that can. And so I thought, well, you know, maybe it could stand for pure vanilla. It's an old uh, vintage vanilla label, vanilla extract. So I really liked how that looked, and so I just left it. You're just going to use a thin, even coat covering the whole um, label here. And this is just printed on regular paper, not cardstock. I often do use cardstock when using Mod Podge because it sort of eliminates, um, you know, the risk of bubbles, which most of the time I don't get bubbles, but um, 
it happens sometimes but sometimes you need a thin paper label like this one the cardstock just wouldn't have looked as good it would have sort of stood off of the can I'm just going to store this on my pantry shelf um, and just um, put my bottles of extract in it. And I just love how it turned out. It's my favorite. I normally don't have any problems with Rust-Oleum paint. It usually does an awesome job, but I must have got a bad can with a bad nozzle or something. I shook and shook and shook that paint, but it was spraying out in a weird way. It was like powdery and um, just a bad finish. It ended up having a texture to it. It almost looked like I had bought textured paint. And so it didn't have the smooth finish that I was hoping for, but it wasn't, you know, so bad that, um, you know, I was going to throw it away or anything. It still looks okay, just not exactly how I wanted it to, but I'm going to continue on here. I'm using the, this um, rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree. It says like rose perfume on it. I'm not so sure what I'm going to store in this tin, but it still turned out very pretty. I'll do something with it. But I'm just going to put the rose perfume label on the top and then below it put some roses. I love how these rub-on transfers are so thin that it almost looks like you painted on the image that it transfers on there. It doesn't look like a sticker. It, um, it just has a very nice look to it. I'm going to take some of this antique wax and using this chippy style brush from the Dollar Tree, I'm going to um, just barely put any paint on the brush here and just do some swipes over this tin to give it, um, to age it, to give it a more vintage look.
I'll brush over the transfer as well just to give it a consistent look the whole way around the tan. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please do subscribe. It helps my channel out. I hope y'all have a wonderful day.